In this lesson, I'm going to talk about what a network topology is all about and different types of network configurations or topologies that we can actually use. So the basic definition or the concept of a network topology is that it's a pattern in which various computers, printers, routers, or other devices on your network are connected within your local area network, wide area network, or other network through different links. There are four principal topologies used in local area networks, which is bus, ring, star, and mesh. And I'm going to talk about in detail about each of these kinds of topologies. But think of a network topology as simply an architecture, right? So if you're planning on creating a network for your own organization or your home environment, for instance, you would have to decide which type of topology you would like to deploy based on your own requirements. Whether it's a bus, whether it's a ring, whether it's a star, or is it going to be a mesh topology? So here are the different topologies with advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with the first one, which is the bus. It takes less cable, relatively cost effective. But the disadvantage is that if the bus breaks or the entire cable breaks, all of the computers that are connected to that cable would not work. The second topology is the mesh. There's a break in the cable your network will still work because it provides fault tolerance. The disadvantage is that it's expensive and complex and really difficult to reconfigure. Ring topology is easy to install but has expensive parts. The fourth kind of topology is the star topology, very common, the easiest to install, almost all local area networks that deploy the star topology. If there's a break in workstation cable network, for example, still works and provides fault tolerance. It's a little bit more expensive than the bus topology, but fairly common. So what is a bus topology? A linear bus topology consists of, like I mentioned earlier, a main run of cable with the terminator at each end and all computers your nodes for example such as file server workstations and other peripherals such as printers they're connected to the linear cable and you can imagine that if there's a break in the cable right any point there's a break the connection would break among computers and devices so once again, the advantages and disadvantages of the bus topology is easy to connect to a computer or a device to a linear bus. Simply hook on the computer, connect the cable, and you're on the network. You can share resources. It requires less cable length than a star topology. The disadvantages is that obviously the entire network shuts down if there's a break in the main cable. The terminators are required at both ends of the backbone cable. It's difficult to identify the problem if the entire network shuts down. And that's the most cumbersome part of having a bus topology. It's not meant to be used as a standalone solution in a large building because if the cable breaks, all of your computers are down and you're just trying to find where the problem is and it's very difficult to identify. Then we have the star topology where you have a bunch of computers, they're connected through a device called switch or a hub, basically a centralized device, all of the cables go into the device, and then of course that device connects to the centralized server through a cable as well. So therefore it's called a star topology and it's fault tolerant because if one of the computers goes down, for instance, nothing happens to the rest of the computers because they're sharing resources through a centralized device called the switch. For example, data is passing through switch. So each of the cable from each of these computers are connected to the switch and then from the switch a cable is connected to your server. The advantages and disadvantages of the star topology. 
it's easy to install no disruptions to the network easy to detect faults and to remove parts but there are also disadvantages it requires more cable length because you can imagine that within the star you have cables coming from one computer to the switch through the centralized device and then additional cables going out as well so if the hub switch or the concentrator fails nodes attached are disabled so if something actually happens to that centralized device obviously more expensive than linear bus topologies because of the cost of the extra peripheral devices such as hubs and switches and we'll talk about hubs and switches later on in a different lesson but here just understand the basic concept of and the advantages and disadvantages of the star topology then we have the mesh which is a combination of your star and bus or ring so it's just a combination of different topologies and that you can deploy within your own environment that's all there is to it and next of course we have a ring topology just a bunch of workstations connected together to form a ring format where data is flowing you're sharing resources from one node to the other here are some of the important considerations for example first one is the money a linear bus network may be the least expensive way to install a network and you don't have to purchase concentrators or switches or hubs the length of the cable the linear bus network uses shorter lengths of cable as far as the future growth is concerned with the star topology for example expanding a network is really easy cable type the most common cable type for example in school network or your company network is unshielded twisted pair which is most often used with star topologies and i'll talk about the cables and the connectors a little later on but for now just these few important considerations as far as these topologies are concerned so last in this lesson i want to talk about a concept of ethernet just to give you a flavor of what ethernet is all about because you might hear this term quite frequently it's basically a system for connecting a number of computer systems to form a local area network with protocols to control the passing of information and to avoid simultaneous transmission by two or more systems so ethernet is the most widely used local area network technology that defines wiring and signaling standards for the physical layer of the transmission control protocol or the internet protocol it's basically just a system that forms the local area network so when you hear the term ethernet it's a system it comprises of different things could be your hardware could be the cables could be the network card could be the tcp ip protocol and so on and i'll talk about of course what tcp ip is and so on but right now just give you an idea of what an ethernet is in this lesson we took a look at different types of topologies so if you are the admin of your own organization or intend to create a network you need to select any one of these topologies based on your own requirements so i hope this helps let's move to the next lesson